since you know how the red personality operates in the world, one of the skills almost all successful people have acquired is the ability of reading people. By the end of this video series, you'll acquire the foundation for a very easy and powerful framework. It is time for the blue personality. Kai's name is even about accuracy. He excels at precision and is the definition of detail oriented. He knows precisely when and how to strike to reach his objectives. He is there to get the job done. He's done his research before he goes on a mission. He is not winging it. In Mission Impossible, there is this great scene that exemplifies perfectly the main behavioral and cognitive differences between red and blue personality types. I'll show that scene and break it down in a second. Before I do, let's create a contrast between reds and blues so it clicks better in your mind. Take a look at this for a second. You have personality profiles that are task-oriented and those that are more relation-oriented and at the same time those that are extroverted and those that are more introverted. As we saw in the main overview and red personality video, reds are leaning towards extroversion and are more task and goal oriented. They want to get the job done as fast as possible. You might call a red person bold, ambitious, driven, but also potentially hot-tempered, rash or dominant. You quickly notice a red person because he doesn't make the slightest effort to conceal who he is. A red person is a dynamic and driven individual. They strive forward, always pushing themselves harder. Their belief in their own ability is unsurpassed. They carry inside them the firm belief that they can achieve anything if they just work hard enough. They make quick decisions and are often comfortable taking the lead and taking risks. And this is a stark contrast with the analytical, conscientious blues. So before I show you the great scene from Mission Impossible, let's pull this up. As you can see, blues are leaning towards introversion and are more task and goal oriented. They want to analyze the job as much as possible. You might call a blue person reserved, analytical and detail oriented. The analytical blues are calm, level headed and think before they speak. Their ability to keep a cool head is undeniably an admirable trait for those who lack such an ability. They are the ones who always seem to have all the right answers, as you can see here. Any ideas what these might be? Yes, Miss... Granger, sir. That one there is Vera's serum. It's a truth-telling serum. And that one is terribly tricky to make. And this is Amortentia, the most powerful love potion in the world. Taken from the hands of Aegon's fallen enemies, forged in the fiery breath of Beleriand the Dread. There aren't a thousand blades. There aren't even two hundred. I've counted. Huh, I'm sure you have. They often work silently in the background, analyzing, classifying, evaluating and assessing situations. They are characterized by their methodical and analytical approach to life, as you can hear in the next part of the same scene. Shame you had to settle for your second choice. Early days, my friend. Let's look at the scene between the primary red personality, Ethan Hunt, and the primary blue personality, William Brandt. Let's start the scene here. Observe the difference between red and the blue. My chief analyst, William Brandt. The pen? Pardon me? The pen. The red is very direct. No need for introduction, or in this case, a handshake. Chief analyst, you say? European male, 50s. About six foot, 180 pounds. Blue eyes. Who is he? Ethan Hunt is trying to find someone. He describes and draws him and shows it to Brian. And listen to how he answers. That could be Kurt Hendricks, 190 IQ. He served in Swedish Special Forces. Professor of Physics, Stockholm University, specialist in nuclear endgame theory. He's answering with facts, data, and logic straight to the point. Blues are highly analytical, and this shows it to a great extent. Specialist in nuclear endgame theory. He set off that explosion to cover his tracks. It could be weeks before the Russians know it's missing, unless we tell them. Now, the real beauty and contrast between red and blues is to be observed in the continuation of this scene. I've always considered you a friend. What's happened is there was a car crash, and they are both under attack. What do we do? 
you. The rat, being quick and impulsive, decides to do this. You. Wait here. He attached a flare to a dead corpse so the men who are after them are deceived thinking that's them. They, on the other hand, escape in the opposite direction. This is, by the way, a great example of Law 3 from the 48 Laws of Power. Conceal your intentions. I've shown this clip there as well. Look at what happens next. Why would that work? Why'd what work? The flare on the body. Why, why would that work? Typical Blue needs to know the why of everything. It did work. Yeah, I know, but... Hey. And Typical Red. It did work. Period. Rats don't need to look back. They prefer to look forward. On to the next thing, as you can see here. You saw the sign? Yeah. Dream come true for any lawyer. I don't have dreams. I have goals. Now it's on to the next one. Coming back to our scene, you observe the impulsive nature of rats. They make decisions very fast, unlike the blues who take their time. But why? I mean, how'd you know that would draw their fire? I didn't. I played a hunch. Okay. All right, so what was your scenario? You can see he's still dissatisfied with the answers. I mean, what do you assume they'd be thinking? Thinking? Yeah. I didn't assume they were thinking. I assumed they were shooting at anything that moved. I just gave them a target. Look, these, these guys aren't road scholars, you know? Before I show you some examples of male and female blue personalities, let's quickly cover the blue score values. The hallmark of a blue person is... Quick message before we move on, I've spent the entire day editing the video. It's finished as you can see in the background. But there's a very exciting announcement I'm gonna make to you. The one-on-one -on -one coaching calls have finally begun. The Mondays are almost fully booked, I only got two slots left there. And in the future I'll be opening a couple of other slots on Sundays. So if you're interested, shoot me a message on Instagram. Be quick with it, because if I'm fully booked, you have to wait until somebody else stops the coaching calls. And that might take a while. Let's continue with the video. Enjoy it. The hallmark of a blue person is their analytical, calm and level-headed approach to life. They love rules, regulations and protocols. Unsurprisingly, they are extremely data-driven. They are conscientious people and on a spectrum of emotional versus rationality, they heavily, heavily lean towards rationality. You observed this wonderfully in the previous example. I cannot overstate this. Logical and rational thinking is critical, absolutely critical to a blue. If it were to them, out with all the feelings as much as possible and in with logic. I don't guess. As a scientist, I reach conclusions based on observation and experimentation. That could be Kurt Hendricks, 190 IQ. He served in Swedish Special Forces. Professor of Physics, Stockholm University, specialist in nuclear endgame theory. I can't bank with a damn. <laughs> Find a tight corner. I will roger that. So what's our play? I'm here to get you to safety. Job's not finished. However, they do not shy away from using emotions to get their job done. Look at this wonderful example. Not until I make him kill you. Slowly. Intimately. In every way he knows you fear. And then he'll wake just long enough to see his good work. And when he screams, I'll split his skull. This is my bargain. Him. You're a monster. Oh no. You brought the monster. So, Banner. That's your play. Loki means to unleash the Hulk. Keep Banner in the lab. I'm on my way. Thank you for your cooperation. The emotions were all up front. You're a monster. In order to get the oh so loved information out of him. Again. They are task oriented, but using emotions to get their job done? No problem. One fundamental aspect of the blue personality is that the journey often matters more to them than a the destination. This is the opposite of a red personality, which tends to prioritize results over the process. Blues rarely take major risk and tend to be prepared for the unexpected events, which ultimately saves them a lot of time and resources. At least, that is how they rationalize it. For blues, the mantra is clear. Things cannot be allowed to go wrong. And quality is all that matters. They are committed to ensuring that every aspect of their work meets the highest standards, even if it takes more time. 
This commitment to quality often sets them apart in various fields. In fact, many engineers exhibit distinct blue traits such as accuracy, systematic thinking, a focus on facts, and a strong emphasis on quality. Logical and rational thinking is at the core of a blue's mindset. You are brilliant, Hermione. Truly. Actually, I'm highly logical, which allows me to look past extraneous detail and perceive clearly that which others overlook. Yeah. So doing research, preparing and planning are all too common for them. You might not be surprised that they are very well read. Look at this. Well, I was curious. So I went to the, the library. library. Exactly, they get their hands on anything if it helps them to prepare for something better. Trips to the library are not uncommon for the analytical blues. They have a very wide spectrum of knowledge, which is fascinating to listen to. The Book of the Invisible Sun, Astronomia Nova, Codex Imperium, Key of Solomon. You finished all of this? Yep. I got a co-worker who's a typical blue, for example, and I love listening to that guy. I'll share stories of blue people in my own life and also how I incorporated blue practices that changed my life on my second channel, which is called Self Mastery with Shayam. If you're expecting highly edited videos on that channel, do not subscribe. It is completely different than this channel. Anyhow, blues also tend to be very orderly. Don't touch everything is in its proper place, as per usual. Nanny. Why are you always so suspicious? Shall I answer chronologically? Or alphabetically. Blues strive to remove emotions from the equation as much as possible and instead rely on facts and sound reasoning. This makes them appear cold and standoffish to most people. Because I believe I just heard you say there are 24 patients in Ward C and 42 patients in Wards A and B, which means there's a total of what, 66 patients at this facility? That is correct. That yes. You have a 67th patient doctor. The blues also have a lot of downsides. I'll cover the main ones in a second, but first, examples of female and male blue personalities. Some female blue personality types are Hermione in Harry Potter. Positive. Dirt and rust have no effect on the blade. It only takes in that which makes it stronger. She is detail-oriented, her love for information is unparalleled, and she is of course the one who knows it all. What's it mean? Magic is forbidden in the corridor. It means the ministry is interfering at Hogwarts. Another is Natasha Romanoff in The Avengers and Black Widow. Look, I really don't want to hurt you. I wouldn't stress about it. She persuades using facts and information. Her attacks are precise. Everything is about getting the job done correctly. Hey, big guy. Some mill blue personality types are John Wick. Well, John wasn't exactly the boogeyman. He was the one you sent to kill the fucking boogeyman. John Wick is a man of focus. I know. Commitment. I'm going to kill you. The sheer fucking will. He is logical and exceptionally dedicated, loyal, reliable, and punctual. He is the kind of person you can count on to show up when he says he will. In short, task-oriented and introverted. Another one is a Hawkeye in the Avengers. Hawkeye's name is even about accuracy. He excels at precision and is the definition of detail-oriented. He knows precisely when and how to strike to reach his objectives. He is there to get the job done. He's done his research before he goes on a mission. He is not winging it. I've done the whole mind control thing. Not a fan. As you can imagine, this list can be extended a lot. Some real life examples of all the disc profiles will be covered in the green personality video, which will be the last of the four types I'll cover. So subscribe to make sure you're not missing out on that one. Let's give you some quick fire things about the blues. How to talk to blues. With blues, you have to cut the small talk. Get to the point by supporting your arguments with facts, evidence, and ample data. 
Blues hate speeches filled with buzzwords and emotional weight. They are less receptive if you try convincing them without facts. How to deal with blue people? Unlike the reds and yellows who make quick decisions, they don't, so give them enough time to make a decision. Also, you need to completely listen to details and feedback and provide loads of evidence and data. What annoys a blue personality? Talking with a lot of emotion or not having your facts straight, a lack of homework done, big lofty dreams, selling a blue sky to a blue person is impossible without providing solid data. What do they hate more? Small talk, uh, making quick decisions, being late, missing details, and sentences that are not coherent. How to adapt to blues behavior? Blues to the other personalities can come over as cold, logical, unemotional. Exactly. They can also come over as pessimists, but they prefer to call themselves realists. They have a keen eye for spotting errors and potential risk. Blues are individuals who meticulously gather information thoroughly and research a topic before they even consider opening their mouths to speak. As the author of Surrounded by Idiots writes, they know how things stand before they open their mouth. They've Googled, read the owner's manual and checked the dictionary and afterwards they present the rapport in full. You can see a great example in this scene. Any ideas what these might be? Yes, Miss... Granger, sir. The most powerful love potion in the world. It's rumored to smell differently to each person according to what attracts them. For example, I smell... freshly mown grass and... new parchment and... If you want to adapt to a blue, Learn to view the world through their lens. Focus on data, rules and regulation. Zoom into the big picture because that is where you'll find common ground with them. She is just a child. The rules are the rules. There's no way around it. Let's look at this again. Unlike the reds who are leaning more towards extroversion, the blues lean more towards introversion. And this significant aspect of a blues personality explains their, their tendency to stay quiet when questions or issues do not arise. Unlike the reds who do not put the slightest effort to conceal who they are. It's time we fight back. We don't have the numbers. We will. The blues, they don't feel compelled to showcase their knowledge to everyone around them. However, when they do speak, you can usually bet on the fact that what they say is being correct. This dedication to accuracy and quality is both a strength and a limitation. By being so detail and quality oriented, they often miss the big picture. They take ages to act because they need all the data to make a decision and only then, only then they will act on it. You must learn how to support them into making quicker decisions and this will be explained in a minute. This need for perfection before action is the reason that placing too many blues in a team or in a group can lead to overplanning without execution. They simply want to think everything through. If time is short, the blues need a red person to take action. Just as much as the red person needs a blue to keep them from acting too fast. In case it isn't clear, remember, blues, unlike the reds, do not like winging things. They need a plan. Look at this clip. We have to go there now. What? We can't do that. We've got to plan. We've got to figure it out. Hermione responds as a typical blue word. But keep watching. Hermione, when have any of our plans ever actually worked? We plan, we get there, all hell breaks loose. We'll go to Hogsmeade, to Honeydews. Harry responds as a typical red. One wants to plan and wait. We've got to plan. We've got to figure it out. And the other wants to act right now. We have to go there now. Under normal circumstances, blues appear calm and balanced on the surface. This calmness is likely because they are constantly monitoring and analyzing their surroundings. They may seem introverted, but this does not mean they are silent. They are actively engaged in their inner worlds, which often results in a quieter outer demeanor. This is wonderfully exemplified in this clip of Peter Baelish. And what then? Don't fight in the north. Or the South, fight every battle, everywhere, always. In your mind, everyone is your enemy, everyone is your friend. Every possible series of events is happening all at once. Live that way and nothing will surprise you. 
Everything that happens will be something that you've seen before. What you saw is also one of the things that is their limitations, especially if you bundle a bunch of blues together. Overplanning. Another thing that limits blues is they find it difficult to begin anything new. But <laughs> why you might wonder? Well, because they want to prepare for every possible scenario thoroughly. Every task involves risk and blues can become almost obsessed with details which might lead to inaction. It can seem a little far-fetched though sometimes, making these grand assumptions out of such tiny details. That's not quite right, is it? In fact, the little details are by far the most important. In fact, the little details are by far the most important. Blues are not interested in being the center of attention. They prefer to be observers and spectators, rather than central characters. According to a blues value, silence can be seen as something positive. If you have nothing meaningful to contribute, they believe it is best to remain silent. Cutting corners, which is more than fine with rats, is something that is not done by blue. And another thing, no detail is too small to be noticed. Let's have a look at this. See this? It's a letter Dumbledore wrote to Grindelwald. Look at the signature. It's the mark again. This, this means something. As you can see, she spotted a little detail. And I want you to remember where the motto of a red person was quick is synonymous with good. Nothing could be further from the truth for a blue. Reds believe that life is not worth living unless they are doing. Blues don't think life is worth living unless they are thinking. And doing things quickly might mean they do something wrong because they did not take the time to evaluate and analyze every possible scenario. They are known for their cautious decision-making process, which often involves putting safety and precision first. While reds or yellows might take bold risks, blues will hold off and consider everything one more time before making a decision. Another big downside is, and I want you to remember this guys, Blue's logical nature can turn to pessimism real quickly. We're not gonna make it. We have to make it. If we can't get to the server, we don't control the elevators, we don't control the security cameras. This operation's over before it even begins. It's 26 minutes to door knock. I don't want to come across as too negative, but I mean, if I was a crank, that's exactly where I'd be. But regardless of their wary nature, which can easily be perceived as negativity, when push comes to shove, they get the job done. If you stay here and cover Benji. Benji, get this thing rewired and back online. I'll get the power off. We can do this. They just need that initial spark to get going instead of keep planning and preparing. Jump! Here you see Bond, which we covered in the red personality video, and Q being a primarily blue personality. Watch this. He's established fail-safe protocols to wipe the memory if there's any attempt to access certain files. Only about six people in the world could program safeguards like that. Set like a typical blue who knows all the numbers, data and facts. And as you know, for the reds, these things are boring. He needs to know only one thing. Of course there are. Can you get past them? Of course there are. Can you get past them? Typical rat. Of course there are. Can you get past them? I invented them. How to behave around blues. Blue's critical thinking can easily turn to suspicion and questioning those around them. Everything can become suspect and sinister as you can wonderfully observe in a conversation of Jorah Mormont from Game of Thrones right here. The masters of Yunkai will pay you your fee and you won't have to split it three ways because you've already slaughtered your partners. You have a very suspicious mind. In my experience, only dishonest people think this way. And here's the perfect quote that exemplified their wary nature. That's something you'll find about me, Cleric. I'm a wary person, cautious by nature, always expecting the worst. An even better example of how Blue's critical thinking can lead to suspicion and questioning everyone around them is this scene in Game of Thrones. What do you think she's after? When I try to understand a person's motives, I play a little game. I assume the worst. What's the worst reason they could possibly have for saying what they say and doing what they do? How well does that reason explain what they say and what they do? 
Furthermore, many blues are perceived as highly critical and almost suspicious of others' work. So what does a blue look like to other people? Cold, logical, unemotional. Let me play it again for you. Cold, logical, unemotional. Blues require a significant amount of personal space, both physically and psychologically. They need to know someone extremely well before they start opening up. And that is something that distinguishes them from reds who are more open. Blues are not a fan of small talk, since they are more task and goal oriented versus relationship oriented. They may give the impression that they do not care about other people, but it's not that they lack empathy, their needs are simply on a different level. Here is a great scene that showcases them. Hey, hey, you okay? This is all our fault. Are you up for this? Are you? Look, I just need to know, because the city is, is flying. We're fighting an army of robots. And I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. But I'm going back out there because it's my job. Okay, and I can't do my job and babysit. You go out there, you fight, and you fight to kill. Stay in here, you're good. Blues are meticulous when it comes to check and recheck. If a triple check were possible, they would do it without hesitation. This need for control and verification is deeply, deeply ingrained in their personality. They don't easily trust what others say and prefer to confirm, record and document everything properly. In order to know how to behave around the blue, learn to understand that their skeptical nature has nothing to do with you. The way they operate may seem cold and unemotional, but this does not mean they lack empathy, as I said before. When they work, they're there for work. When they're with family, then they're there for family. Don't take the way they are personal and learn to behave in their manner for a more effective communication. So here are some quick pointers to keep in mind when you are around the blue. First, avoid small talk. They are not interested in it. Second, avoid unrealistic plans. Suggesting overly ambitious or impractical plans won't resonate with blues. Present ideas with realistic perspectives. Third, stick to the job. Blues value facts and clear communication, not your personal preferences. Avoid inspirational speeches and be straightforward in your discussions. Fourth, rationality over emotions. Blues are not affected by your sad tale of woe. Leave the emotions for the greens and the yellows. Present what you need to present clearly and facts is what they want. Fifth, details matter. Pay close attention to details when interacting with blues. They appreciate precision and thoroughness. Sixth, emphasize quality. Quality is of utmost importance to blues. Demonstrate your commitment to quality in your work. Seven, be patient. Blues may take their time in making decisions. Understand their need for careful consideration. On my other channel, I'll explain to you guys how I have dealt with blues, especially when it comes to decision making, because it bothers me a lot how long they take for every little thing to take care of. Eight, do your homework. They have done theirs and they expect you to know what you are talking about. Off the cuff remarks are not digested well by the rational and analytical blues. I've known many blue people in my life, from close friends to professors and definitely one of my colleagues. The most frustrating thing for a red about a blue person is the fact that they take ages to make a decision. Here is a great scene in Mission Impossible to exemplify exactly that. Saturn, take the leap. Jump now? Yes, commit, jump. You notice how direct and to the point the red is. He wants action and he wants it right now. Jump, jump, and I catch you. Now. Typical impatience of reds that gets to anger. So, uh, you're sure about this suit, right, Manji? Pretty sure. <laughs> now you're pretty sure. And here you see how sharp a blue is. Pretty sure? Jump. Oh, God. Jump. Jump! Remember, for reds, quick is synonymous with good. Jump! Again, if you have blue people in your environment, you know that this is how they are. They take way too long to make a decision. So here are a few ethical gems for you 
when you need a blue to act fast. Remember, blues are prone to decision stagnation. So how can you exactly help them to act faster? First, provide necessary data. Offer a lot of information that's required to make an informed decision. Second, set deadlines. Highlight the urgency of decisions by establishing clear deadlines. Third, explain consequences. And this is a big one, guys. Illustrate the repercussion of delaying decisions to emphasize their importance. As for the perfect clip to bring this whole video and blue personality together, let's watch this great and phenomenal scene in the black lace. It perfectly exemplifies a blue person's way of thinking logical, data and detail oriented, with meticulous preparation. I highly recommend you to watch the full scene to get a true grasp of a blue person's logical and coherent mind. For the full video, watch The Blacklist Season 6, Episode 6. Here are some quick cuts from that episode to exemplify the blue's mind. Most people think life is priceless, not clever. He did a cost-benefit analysis on these people, figured that the cost outweighed the benefits, and killed them because of it. Why would he do that? Because by fighting to stay alive, they used up resources that he thought were better used on healthier patients. Their belief is based on a Judeo-Christian tradition of justice. Mine is more algebraic. It's a constant and a variable. The constant is the work you do. It is value, a variable. It's what economists call the VSL, value of statistical life. In this case, the value of your life versus the value of the life of the witness. Your testimony will put you behind bars. Killing her. You can't put a price on a life. Nearly every department in our government has a VSL. If her VSL is lower than yours, the EPA's is 10 million, FDA's is 7.9, Department of Transportation is 6.4. The annoying beep that goes off when the people in the front seat don't put their seatbelts on? Ever wonder why there was no beep for the people sitting in the back? It would cost the auto industry $325 million a year and save 44 lives. 325 divided by 44 is 7.4 meaning that the value of each life that would be saved is $7.4 million. But since DOT values each life at only $6.4 million, no beeps in the back. Those are statistical models to determine the cost of a life, not to decide the value of one life over another. Oregon recipient protocols. What a teacher makes versus a hedge fund manager. They make comparative values all the time. And I've done it for you and Ms. Carter. Circle the relevant numbers. Well, according to this, she comes out ahead smaller carbon footprint. How do I tip your scales? How can murder ever be ethical? How can 44 people die each year because they weren't warned to put on their seatbelts? Some lives have more value than others. Move the plant, your life will have more value than the woman set to testify against you. It's nothing personal, it's just math. The coherence and logic Data-supported decisions and a thorough understanding of numbers is what a predominant blue personality's mind works like. In the next video, I'll cover the upbeat but potentially highly manipulative yellow personality. Consider subscribing and I highly recommend you to click here for the most recent video on this channel and here for the yellow personality video. If you haven't watched the red personality, you're missing out on something, but it will be coming up right here. And if you're still watching, remember, Keep striving for excellence.